Hey, YouTube theologians, you know what's good? Bacon. I just had a piece of bacon. Mm. Today, it, ooh, this, ah, this is the Sunday before the Ascension. That makes next Sunday the Sunday after the Ascension. And it makes Thursday, this Thursday, the Ascension Day, which we should celebrate. I found out in Bible class today that there's a country, Finland or Lesotho or some country in the world where the people get off of work on Ascension Day. Now that is godly because, I mean, can you imagine a culture the Ascension, I think, let's see, let me let me take some stabs at some stuff. The Ascension is the is is mentioned more by Paul than the crucifixion. Do you think that's true? I don't think I'm not sure it's true actually, but it's probably it's gotta be pretty close because Paul talks about the Ascension a lot. How about this? The third most the third most quoted Old Testament passage in the New Testament is about the Ascension. Psalm 110, the Lord said to my Lord, sit here at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. Remember that Psalm? That's about the ascension. Jesus sits at the right hand of the Father and rules and reigns so that the the phrase Jesus is Lord is bound up to the ascension. It's fantastic. So we should remember that Jesus is ascended. I have a friend, Pastor Graf. You guys know Pastor Remember Pastor Graf down at Grace in Albuquerque? He said to me one time that every theological trouble in the church boils down to a denial of the ascension. Now, I don't know if that's right or wrong, but I do know that the thoughts that it provokes are helpful because what happens when we forget that Jesus is sitting at the right hand of the Father Is it, well, probably two things. I'll tell you what. You know how without the, without the gospel, it's either pride or despair? Remember that part? It's either Pharisees or Judases. It's, those are the two options that you got. Either you exalt yourself or you do. So, the, you, you, so pride or despair. So this, you see the same sort of thing happen. Like when your parents are gone, and the kids, it's either pride or despair. Pride of, I'm going to take care of everything. Uh, you know, I'm taking over now. I'm in charge. I'm going to make it all happen. Or a kind of hedonistic despair. Do whatever you want. There's, you know, we can just... There's no help. There's no hope. There's no rules. And so it seems like that's the that's the thing that happens. We just, so Jesus is gone. That's the idea. Jesus is gone. So either now we got to do it ourselves, pride. We got to grow the church. We got to make things happen. We got to it's you got to pull ourselves up by the bootstraps. Is that a thing? Is that a thing that people say? You got to pull yourself up by your bootstraps? Or despair, there's no help. We're left to ourselves. Or hedonistic epicureanism. Do whatever you want. No one's watching. But when Jesus, when we recognize that Jesus is sitting on the throne, then none of those things are possible. Jesus is Lord, not us. He's ruling and reigning in the church. He's governing all things for the, Ephesians 1, for the sake of his body, the church, for us, for you. For you YouTube theologians, for you Christians. Jesus is ruling and reigning all things now. Now. So that means you don't have to. You're not in charge. You don't get to be in charge. You also don't have to be in charge. Number one, pride is done. Number two, despair is done because he is our helper. And he's not only our helper in the life to come, but he's also our helper in this life. And also, you can't do whatever you want. You can't be a hedonist if Jesus is on the throne. (laughs) That reminds me of that bumper sticker. Jesus is coming, look busy. <laughs> Jesus is here. I don't look busy, but you, you recognize it. You're not just, you know, you're not going to, you know, the, the cat's away, the mice will play kind of thing. Well, the cat has not left you as orphans. 
says Jesus. So these three great temptations, these three great slaveries, the slavery of the flesh, the slavery of pride, the slavery of despair, these are all destroyed by Jesus. I think I got to do something on the three slaveries, by the way. Some, uh, some guys in... Um, where is that? There's a... In Denmark? The Luther Study Days? Where are you guys? Asked me if I could do an online lecture on freedom. The Christian and freedom. And I think I want to talk about the three slaveries. And, and, to think, and talk about it in terms of, of the prodigal son. Remember how the, the, all three slaveries are there in the story of the prodigal son. The slavery of hedonism, the youngest son who goes and lives with the prostitutes and then with the, with the pigs. And then you have the slavery of despair. I'm not worthy to be your son, make me your slave. And then the slavery of pride, the older boy. All these years I've been your slave. Doing what you wanted. All three slaveries are right there. But if Jesus is sitting on the throne, then he is Lord. <laughs> he is Lord. It's an amazing thing to me that that is the phrase that got the martyrs killed. Jesus is Lord. And that is essentially a confession of the ascension. <laughs> All right, we got to talk more about the Ascension, but I'm interested in your guys' thoughts about it. So if you have thoughts about the Ascension and its, and its connections with other theologies, I'd love to hear about it in the comments. Or even better, why don't you start your own YouTube channel and, uh, and make a video about it and then put up the link here and I'll share your links so we can have this conversation about the Ascension of, the, of our Lord Jesus Christ and confess what it means that He is in fact Lord means we don't have to be the Lord. It means that we don't get to be the Lord. And it means that we don't need to be the Lord. Ha! <laughs> God be praised for that. All right, that's a short one, but hopefully it'll generate some conversation. Thanks, guys. Sunday drive home. God's peace. <laughs>